Hey everyone, happy Friday! My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft and work on a project together uh, from beginning to end for about an hour here in the evening. Uh, and tonight we are continuing on block six, Rose and Dot by Lori Kennedy. So we got pretty far yesterday. Uh, we have it basically done. We just have to top stitch it down. So that is the plan for tonight. Look how cute. I love it. So we are going to be top stitching it. I already put it on the machine, but we're going to be top stitching it with this um, Orfil 12 weight, which is a rather thick thread. So uh, uh, with the weight of the thread, when the number goes down, it actually gets fatter. So it's this orange 12 weight thread, and we're going to be just stitching around the edges, uh, holding down our pieces. So right now they're fused with a, a fusible applique uh, and uh, with a fusible uh, like glue uh, to hold the appliques down and that's what we're doing. Oh you're quilting on your charming chevrons tonight Pam! Awesome! Congrats! That is super duper exciting. I am going to do a little quilting on here. So uh, on Thursday and Friday we work on the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along but all the other days we have been working on the charming chevrons quilt and that is a quilt that I'm doing for the sole reason uh, to learn how to quilt, to try and learn how to free motion quilt. Uh, it's my first free motion quilt uh, and uh, we're almost done. So I feel like I'm learning a lot and getting a little practice in. So I think we are actually going to go in, since there's some, there's uh, batting inside this flower, I think we're going to go around and do some quilting in the flower after we top stitch it all down. So I'm pretty stoked about that tonight. We get to practice uh, free motion quilting in the wild on an actual block. I'm super excited. So all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. We will get going tonight. Hope you all had a fabulous week. All right, there we are. So let's get up here. So we got super duper far on this yesterday. So uh, we started this yesterday as well. So we got that, that cute pieced back with just the two fabrics. And then this is that fusible ap applique. And we used that steam a seam uh, as our glue, as our fusible applique piece. And then we put little foam in here and kind of did, not foam, batting and did like a like a yo-yo around it and then it still has some fusible. So be sure to check out yesterday's video if you want to see kind of how we did that. I wanted to see if we could use fusible and batting at the same time, and it sort of worked. I think it's going to work out uh, great in the end, actually. So we're going to top stitch it down. I have, this is on the machine, but it is, it is Orfil 12 weight floss. So here's, here's the difference. So this is, this is the 50 weight the Orofil 50 weight that we've been sewing with, and then this is the, the 12 weight, and I'll get up close here so you guys can see just the different in weight. So look how much thinner that cream color is compared to that orange. So much thicker. Uh, it's more for like decorative stitching, which is exactly what we're gonna do now. We're, we're just top stitching. So I think my plan is just to go around the edges with a straight stitch. Um, you know, so like maybe a sixteenth of an inch in or so, just around, kind of framing each piece with a straight stitch. And and same here with the circles, straight stitch around both of the circles. And then I think we'll go back in and add some free motion quilting little swirls around here. I think that'll just look super cute. And I'm, I'm excited to try, like I said, try uh, some free motion quilting in the wild outside of that charming chevrons quilt. So when I was looking at this, I thought I was going to do this circle first just to attach this down. But then I was thinking, you know, there's a benefit to us not having any glue on these edges. I can get up underneath here. So I think I'm going to do the stem and the leaves first. So I'm going to do the stem, the top stitching, and like lift this up and get it right underneath there. Uh, and then because then our flower will cover up those back stitches that we'll have to do there. So we're going to start with the stem and then I'll probably do the leaves 
And then we'll do um, probably the outer circle just to get it on and then the inner circle. And then we'll switch to my darning foot. I got my, um, my free motion quilting darning foot here. We'll attach that and add the little swirls. And I think that's what we'll do tonight. All right. So in theory, this should not take all that long, but you know, you never know, right? So uh, since it's Friday, we might just do this tonight and call it an evening, but, but we'll see. We might have time to, time to um, work on a few other things. So I did do a test of this. Um, here are my couple tension tests. And if we look in the back, so I started out, uh, the stitches were kind of just too skinny, I thought. So I made my stitch length a little bit longer. And then I adjusted the tension a little bit. Uh, you can see here that front is coming out a, a little bit, that front thread, the orange, and here it's tucked in a little bit more. So um, I think we're all set up. You know, we do have that thicker thread on top, and we still have that thin bobbin thread in there. Uh, the bobbin thread does not, or the bobbin doesn't really like uh, thread this thick in it. So we're, we're doing two different thicknesses of thread and that's why I wanted to make sure I checked the tension on it and stuff. But we're going to just eyeball this. I'm going to just, um, I want to go like, I don't know, maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch in or so. And I'm going to back tack it. I, I'm off, off where I'm going to cut it right now. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should back tack it right in that quarter inch. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so a quarter of an inch is going to be sewn into the quilt, the seam allowance. So I think that's where I'm going to back tack it so it can just hold it in place. So back tack is just when you go in forward a stitch, then backwards a stitch, and then forward again. And that kind of locks the thread in place. So let's just go down this edge here. And like I said, I'm going to just kind of lift this, fold this up out of the way. And then we'll back tack it right there too. All right, and that's it. Take that out of the machine. Hope everyone had a great Friday. Aw, that's so sweet. Okay, I love it. So I'm gonna just trim, trim the thread here. Let's trim the back right away too just so we don't get a whole mess happening here. What size thread on the bobbin? So Vicki, I am using my 50 weight in the bobbin and my 12 weight uh, in the top. So you can see there's quite a bit difference in thickness. So that's that's why you need to just double check tension and stuff. And, and I can see that, you know, the front thread is still kind of popping through a little bit, but it's actually kind of sunken in it, it, it's in the, in the middle of the fabric pieces. It, it's just because it's fat, it looks like it's popping out, but it's really not. It, it's in there. But look, it, it's so cute. I think that's, this is going to be a nice touch because I thought the gold, this gold fabric was kind of blending in color-wise, uh, value-wise to the background a little bit, a little too much. So this darker bright orange is going to just kind of frame it up. All right, we'll get on this side here. Again, trying to do the same distance away or so. If it's not perfect, that's fine. I'm gonna back tack in that quarter inch again, going reverse and then forward. And I'm just gonna try and sew straight, which is sometimes pretty difficult for me. <laughs> All right, and we'll back tack it there. All right, our second little bit. Oh, thanks, Debbie. You like the you like the orange? Yeah, that was that was a good find. Uh, it, you know, I got to clean up my sewing area, and this is one of the things. This this thread was just kind of randomly sitting over here, and I saw it. I'm like, oh, good thing I didn't clean because that's that's just the right color for this, I think. All right, snip some of these. Ooh, we got a little bit of a mess there, but that's gonna be okay, I think. We'll just snip that. It's not gonna matter. Okay, so since we're kind of working on these 
uh, these iron-on bits here. I'm, I'm going to do these leaves right away too. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stitch up to the corner and then come back down. I don't think I'm going to do any free motion quilting or anything fancy in the leaves. Like I think it'd look cute with like a little line, but I want to make this part that we did with um, the batting, I want to make that extra special because uh, we, we did put that batting in, which is just silly. I've never done that before. Um, so so I'm going to make this part in particular extra special just because it's kind of the the focal point of the block, but also of that batting. I want to call out, hey, we did something cool here. So that's where I'm going to put the free motion quilting. And I'm not going to do it here just because I don't want to call, I want the, all the attention to go to here, even though I do think it would look cute with little like leaf veins and stuff. If we think it still needs it, then we can always put it in too. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to back tack it kind of at the bottom here. Just winging it. I mean, I probably wouldn't actually need to back tack it. I could just sew and then tuck in the edges into the back. Maybe we'll try that with the other side. All right, I'm gonna have to rotate as I go here. You guys, I'm sewing with my shoes on today and <laughs> it's not my, um, my fast to slow stitching is not as honed with my shoes on, but I'm kind of totally icked out right now because we have a, a line of ants going like right between my feet almost. So I'm like, I'm not taking off these shoes, but we usually get, there's this one part in the kitchen dining room area, which is where I'm at here, that always gets ants from, from outside and we didn't have them yet this year, and I thought we were going to miss them, but within the past um, day, they have arrived. So uh, my husband put put um, like poison traps down, and it's the kind of thing where the you think you got like 20 ants walking around, and it's gross, and then you put this stuff down that they're supposed to eat, and then bring back to like home base, and it attracts them, right? And so you realize that, oh, you didn't have, um, you didn't have 20 ants. You had like 600 ants and they're all kind of walking right underneath me. Black. Oh, so I have, um, I have 50 weight in the bobbin and uh, um, 12 weight on top here, if, if that's what the question was. You know, we've tried talcum powder before, like previously, other years, and we've tried, um, oh, what is it, that, uh, what's that powder that's like sandy or something, some special thing like that, um, none of it, it doesn't do anything, the only thing that, we've tried, we've tried everything, we really, really have, and, uh, the only thing that does it is this stuff, and it's gross. Like, we have, you know, our, tw like I said, our 20 ant problem is going to turn to, like, you know, a thousand ants for, like, four days, and then, then they'll just all be gone. Yeah, that hasn't worked either. Correction, the the raid or, or not none of it. This is this is it. This is this is what works. But like, you know, we hate using it and everything, but man. We thought we were gonna miss it this year. We get them in our bathroom and we get them here, like in the kitchen uh, dining room right by the, the window and Ooh, man, that pulled a lot through. Hopefully we probably got a little, ah, I thought so. Yeah, we got a little rat's nest behind us. Maybe I can force it out. Ah, nope. We got a, we got a situation here. Let's try that again. Um, my thread pulled a little at the start of my stitching, and I think we got, yep, there we go. We got a, a rat's, rat's nest. Boo! Yeah, if I'm not holding the thread down when I start. Like that's why I like my leaders and enders too, because it kind of holds that thread in place. But if I'm not holding it down, then the machine wants to suck it into 
into the machine. And that makes that big rat's nest, bird's nest on the back. Look, I'm totally icked out though. It's, it's literally a trail, like right here, right here, but underneath a trail from the, from the side of the wall to the kitchen. Um, they kind of, they kind of like both places. Yuck! I'm icked out, people! Blah. So they'll probably still be here tomorrow. Oh yeah, it just, no, Nolene, that's a good point. It actually just rained. It's been hot, 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 hot forever and hardly any rain. And then last week we got a little rain and... And today it's been raining all day, so yeah, that could be it. That could be it right there. Can you leave the long tails and pull the bottom thread? Oh, shoot, Gina, yeah, you're right. That That's what I was gonna do this time. You're right, instead of back tacking. Okay, so for sure I'll do that up here because then we'll have a pretty nice back. I've actually never done that before, but I, I know about it just from quilting. I just haven't thought about it when I had the opportunity. So we'll do that this time. So instead of back tacking, since that kind of makes a little bit of a mess here, um, I can just stitch normally without back tacking and then pull the threads to the back and kind of tie them off. That's how you do. When you want a quilt uh, to be judged <laughs> in a show for fancy quilting, that's what you do. You don't ever, you don't ever back tack. You always tuck in the threads and tie them in a knot away so you, you can't see it. So we'll, we'll try that up top here. And yeah, we'll just, I guess, back tack this bottom one too because that's where we're at. Oop, I think I went a little off there. Oh well. All right, calling it, that's done enough. All right. So I always like cutting the front first for that reason because then I can um, turn to the bobbin side and kind of pull on it and it'll kind of pop, pop the threads to the back. But yeah, I should do that with the whole thread to bring it to the back. We'll do that, we'll do that for the flower. Eh, it's a little messy. I'm gonna just trim it up real quick here. Maybe I can pop it through to the back. Come on, little bugger. I just want this tiny piece there's this tiny little loop that I want to pull to the back and I'm just going to grab a pin. There we go. Oh, it's still there. It's still a little messy on the front here. All right, well, I guess I pulled it to the front. Well, whatever. It's going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to just... Uh, Snip it close. All right, let's uh, let's do this little top bit now. So here we go. So that I think helped a ton, ton, ton because um, this was this orange was really, really blending into the background here. Um, so this uh, or this this gold. So this orange just really I think made it pop. Now now the leaves don't get lost anymore. So I'm I'm really happy about that. Oh, and you guys, like I noticed this this morning. You know, we chose this fabric with the circles, but that was perfect because there it's just like this circle here. It totally uh, the designs totally go together. So I, that was kind of a fun surprise that I wasn't expecting. All right, let's um, go around this circle. So this time I'm not gonna back tack. I'm gonna try and do the thing where I pull it, pull the thread to the back, but I'm gonna just go around slowly. Uh, and then I also have my little stiletto here. And you, you can see like these little, little points. Uh, I'm just gonna try and kind of grab those and tuck them in a little bit as I go. I don't know if that's gonna work all that well, but you know, that might help get us to have like a more perfect circle here. 
I think we're, we're just going to start right there. It's going to be a little challenging to grab these little corner bits. It might just not work. I think if we can get this circle um, looking roundish, then then it'll have the effect of it being pretty round. There, I'm just kind of holding it there with the stiletto a little bit. There's a little extra points. So this is the part that's actually the batting. We are sewing through the batting right now. So a little cute top stitching. What kind of foot am I using? Oh, I'm just, right now I'm just using the, um, it's, it's just a quarter inch quilting foot. So it's just, you know, for a straight stitch, you can do a little zigzag. And uh, uh, the nice thing is that this little part here is kind of right at that scant quarter inch mark. But when I do the uh, free motion quilting that I want to try on this, then I'll switch to the free motion quilting foot or the, the darning foot. So I'm going real slow. So my mom had a tip for going for doing circles, uh, but I'm just going so slow, and I, I want to tuck these edges in, so I'm not not doing it. But she just kind of kind of tries to find the center and holds it down like with a stiletto or a pin, and then just then just hits go, <laughs> and then it lets it pivot by itself along the edge. <laughs> so I, I have not tried that before, but it totally makes sense. I'm just being really kind of finicky here with, with this circle. Tucking in these points, although I don't know if I'm accomplishing much doing that. All right, we're about, eh, not quite halfway. I think it's going to look really fun on this this bright neon yellow too, this orange. So I'm using a straight stitch because I don't really have any other option <laughs> except for a zigzag stitch and I thought that would be too bold. Um, I like just this kind of little outline. But this, if you have a sewing machine that has this feature, uh, it would be so cute with a blanket stitch on the outside. I know a lot of um, fancier machines have stitch options, <laughs> like all machines after, you know, my 70s machine sort of thing, um, but a lot of the newer ones, they know that quilters use it and they know that they like applique and stuff, and so they put special stitches uh, that quilters will like in, and blanket stitch is, is one of those. That would look totally adorable around around these edges. Blanket stitch is kind of like the traditional hand stitch that you'd use to stitch things down and um, the machine version is, is cute because it kind of implies that same um, same idea. Okay, I lost the... oh there it is. I'm trying to keep my eyes on the bobbin thread here. It's turning out cute! We'll get that inner circle too and that'll give it dimension to, we'll start to see the poofiness, I think, after we get that center one in. This is a pretty good point here. I could have done the applique in a different way to not have like all these little points popping out, but I like the way we did it. It was fast and kind of fun to do. which was my objective this time around. I want to get this block done because I am running behind on blocks real quick. All right, here's the last stitch. Let's, um, now I haven't done this before, but let's try and pull these threads to the back. Oh, the, the fusible grabs or the needle, um, the fusible gets the on the needle. Uh, do you have like a, are you in a really muggy climate? Although it gets pretty muggy here. 
Oh, there we go. So I, I pulled those from the back. Oh, so that's great. So uh, now um, I don't have those little, I don't have those big fat back tacking things there. So in theory, what you do now is you tie it off just um, to make sure it stays where it is. What do I tie it to though? It looks like I got a little scrambled up in here. We're just gonna tie a knot, how about that? So here's the beginning and end piece. I've never done this, so I'm sure there's a special way to do this. <laughs> I'm sure I probably don't need to even do it anyway, but we'll just tie a little knot. There we go. These guys are a little far away because I think one thread got stuck somewhere, but we'll tie those in a knot too. Old Husqvarna machines have a series of holes. Oh, of holes in the extension table to do to do circles. Smart, smart! Then you just put a, a pivot point down there and you got you got yourself some perfect, perfect circles. I just think that's cool. I, I want to experiment with that sometime. I think that would be neat. But not when I'm trying to be all perfect here, right? <laughs> okay. So here it is. It is a little poofy. How fun. I love the little, it's such a teeny touch having the batting in there, but it does put some importance on, on this flower area. I like it. All right, let's do this inner circle. We'll do the same way where, where we pull it to the back. Man, I'm going to do that more often. That is slick. Look how clean it is just by pulling those threads to the back versus all these back tackings. You know, in theory, if I was being more hardcore, I'd probably redo this area to get rid of those, but, you know, we're not playing that game. All right, so uh, uh, let's get in here again. I'm going to do do the um, do this inner circle, and then we'll try and do some quilting in this itty bitty area. Oop, gotta turn the light on. Foot down. I would love to just like I'm. I'm super excited to try the quilting in the wild, like what I said. Uh, earlier and it should be a whole lot easier because I'm just working with this teeny piece I'm gonna have to warm up though. I have a little I might have to check tension too And you know what if it turns out super crazy. Oh, well, I tried I like the idea of it though a little teeny little bit of quilting in here Oh, Nolene, I have to look up how to do the knicker knot again. Oh, that was the knicker knot I used a needle for that We'll definitely get to the knick or not once we start doing some English paper piecing. And I can pretty much guarantee there's going to be some English paper piecing along the way here. Actually, I can't guarantee it, but I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing there will be some English paper piecing. And that's where we were really using the knick or not to hold our pieces together. I'm just going one stitch at a time and turning because this is this is an itty bitty circle. Could be smaller though. We've had smaller circles uh, in the past. Splendid sampler. All right, here's my last stitch. Oh, I think it kind of needs another one. It does. All right, there we go. Now we'll pull this and. Bring it to the back again. I think I can just kind of yank up on these and get the stiletto in there. All right, where's the other guy? Over here. There we go. If you pull on the bobbin thread, then, then it'll pull the front thread. Oh, that's pulling this other stitch. Where's the other one? Oh, right here. I was pulling on the wrong guy. Shoot, I might, I might have just undid that last stitch. Oh, I did like a little itty bitty stitch. All right, we're gonna get super duper. Uh, fussy. <laughs> So watch this, I'm getting way over fussy right now, but I'm gonna just add, I'm annoyed that there's that extra little, you know, look how this is, this is just, you know, I wrote that thing on perfection and now, <laughs> now I'm, I'm getting sucked in. It must be late and it must be Friday, it must be tired. So I am going to go back in here and 
Uh, gosh, can I even do it? I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to add back that little stitch because <laughs> I'm a crazy person. There we go. <laughs> Man, you know, I'm, you know, it's, uh, late when my perfectionism, like, things start kicking in and I have to do little silly things like that. But, oh well. It's making me extra, extra happy today having that one little stitch perfect and having um, these tucked into the background. So, and this is new, so I feel like I'm learning. Uh, so I, I'm getting that learning excitement and I'm not getting that why do I have to have everything perfect, like, stress, you know what I mean? So, to me, this is still a fun new thing that I'm playing around with. All right, let's get those snippies out of the way. Oop. Okay. So, there is a little inner circle cute. All right, so this is where I want to maybe try the uh, hand, or the, um, oh God, it's, it's cute. This is, this really, really helped. Really, really, really helped having this outline here because it's just putting a contrasting barrier between the leaves and the background because they really were blending in. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that right now because it's totally separated because of, uh, because of the orange thread. Ooh, I'm really happy we did that. Okay. So I want to try, just for funsies, uh, I want to try quilting in here. And I'll, I kinda, I'll show you what I have in mind. I'll draw it on, on this guy. And we're going to kind of wing it, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I've been practicing my free motion, free motion quilting, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So what I want to do, I'm going to get, get in here tighter there for you guys. I am going to... I think I want to just do some simple like swirls around it. So I wrap my wrap my brain around it a little bit. So like just like this, I think. Can you kind of see what I'm doing? Just like just like a little swirl. So I have a little loop, but it almost looks like petals. And then I got to somehow get to where I began. There we go. So I think. I think that's what I want to try. Oh, there you can see it when I have the, the glare of the light there. Uh, I think that'll look kind of cute. All right, I'm, I'm excited. So let's, uh, I do have a little scrap of batting. I cut out a little piece from it. Oh, 50, isn't the 50 on? Uh, yes, so the, the 50 weight is the, Lori, the 50 weight is, is this. The 50 weight is the thinner. So 12 is actually fatter than 50. So the number, like it's weird, like the, how, how the numbers work, but uh, the 50 is the thinner, and that is on the bottom. And then the 12 uh, is the thicker, and that is, that is on the top. Um, so the pretty top stitching one. Ooh, I gotta, I gotta switch, my, switch my foot. We'll throw this quilting foot on. So I was using a different quilting foot these past couple days um, for the Charming Chevrons, but I'm, I'm putting this one back on just because I, I think I'll be able to see a little bit better. There's a little bit bigger of an opening. So let's get this on. Oh, nope, nope, Lori, the, um, the orange is the 12 weight. So 12 weight is actually small. You can actually, um, if you put two strands of the 12 weight together, it's about the same as uh, three strands of embroidery floss almost. Uh, so I think it, we did a test for that. Yeah, so, so two strands of the 12 weight I think was pretty close to three strands of the embroidery floss. So people actually do embroider with, hand embroider with the, this uh, 12 weight thread too. And, and people use it for machine embroidery too. I'm just snipping some of these bits so they're out of my way. Wow, man, Perfectionism, perfectionism's really <laughs> rampant today. I feel like I have to clean up my practice sheet. All right, I just want to uh, check my tension and uh, just get a little practice <laughs> in quick since I am a total beginner at this. Um, we did 
Like I said, I'm working on the Charming Chevrons quilt. Ooh, you know what? I gotta change my stitch length to zero. My feet are still up here. My, my feed dogs, I mean, my feed dogs, because I can't get them to lower on my machine. Can you tell me how to press a fold out of some fabric I have? You tried misting with water and starch. Oh, but you can't get it out. Um, can you wash it? Like, is it, is it like a washable fabric, Cheryl? That, that might do the trick. Oh, gosh, man, you guys, it's like I haven't done this in a... <laughs> I tried to start already, and I didn't even bring my bobbin thread up. Man, it's so funny, because I feel like my mind is totally into this today, but clearly I'm, like, missing steps and... All right, a few. Oh, this will be interesting too because I have a different weight top stitch. So this might be, yeah, sure. I think that that would probably get rid of it. This might be a total nightmare. We're gonna see. I haven't, oh yeah, look, it totally busted the thread. Okay, so this, um, this 12 weight might just be too fat to do this free motion quilting. Ah, which is a total bummer. Man, oh, I still want to do it though. Have any of you guys quilted with um, 12 weight? I don't think I have this, well, yeah, it wouldn't be the same if I did different color. And this is a, this is a large needle. It, it's a 90, 90, size 90 needle. Oh, I'm going to be sad if this doesn't work. Yeah, I could just embroider it. We'll, we'll try again. Maybe it is the... F Why don't I try and cover the feed dogs? I do have... Um, this is the cover that I was using um, when we were doing free motion quilting. So let's... There. We'll just tape this guy down. I gotta get my um, bob and thread up again though. Come on bobbin. There you go. Maybe this will help. Oh, I'm gonna be sad if I can't do it though. Need a needle with a bigger eye? Just use the same as bottom. Oh, I don't, it'll still puff. Oh, that's true. Fine. If. If all else fails, if this orange doesn't work, then, then we'll do it the same color as the bobbin, but I really wanted this pretty... I, I might have one... Um, oh, I gotta bring the bobbin up, or the bobbin thread up. I may have one more bigger uh, needle with a bigger eye, so maybe we'll try that yet. Come on, Bobbin. There you go. Oh, I'm going to be sad. Power up and move slow. Okay, we're going to try it. Foot is down. Okay. You know what? Let's get a glove on here, too. I'm going to use the gloves just because I can maneuver a little bit better. If I can get my fingers in there more, I think. Okay. All right. I think we're in business here. Okay, but I wanted to try and do that circle, and I need to practice that. So let's, let's just draw a circle here quick and a circle in the middle. I just wanna, how was I gonna do that? I was gonna go around. Oh no, I was gonna go the other way, like a pedal. There we go, okay. That's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna get over to my fake little circle here. So let's try and travel this way. We're not broken yet, so I think, maybe it was like, maybe the feed dogs were just like eating at it a little bit. All right. So I want to do like a pedal, and then a loop, and then the pedal, and a loop, 
pedal loop, pedal loop, pedal loop, pedal loop, pedal. Okay, I think I got it. All right. All right, people, we are in business. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, I'm super excited. All right. I think uh, I think this little cover solved solved the deal here. All right, pedal loop. Let's see where do we start. Um, pedal loop. We are gonna start like right here. <laughs> see how this goes. All right. First, we need that. Um, we need our bobbin up again. All right, there we go. That was easy this time. All right, let's get our first couple stitches. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, I'm gonna get my little gloves on again. I gotta think about how this goes again. I gotta, I gotta kind of look at my little map here. Pedal loop, pedal loop, okay. Does it kind of go out? Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna just leave this here. I'm not gonna turn it, so okay. I think I got it, guys. <laughs> I have to talk, talk myself through it. Pedal, oh, now it's not working. Okay, let's go back. All right, now we got it. It's, it's skipping a few stitches here and there, but we're gonna live with it. I'm gonna stop quick, get these guys out of the way. Oops, I should stop with it down. Oh, I just got these more in the way. <laughs> oh well. Oh, and it broke the thread at the end again. No! All right, well, we almost did it here, guys. I'm tempted to give it another go. <laughs> we are close. Uh, it got a little frayed at the end here. Should we just get real picky? What I could do is just embroider these last little stitches and then cut these little bits, these toe catchers, and, and do embroider those too. But otherwise, it's kind of fun. It didn't quite like me. Let's try and pop pop that thread out to the back. It just got all frayed here. Right there is where we started. Come on, little guy. Just trying to pick that thread and bring it to the back like we did before. Or you know what? I can probably just take this end. I'll just take this end and embroider. Um, Deborah, I think mostly because it's, I mean, I don't know for sure. I'm not clearly a pro at, um, let's bring Zeb back over here. I'm not a pro at <laughs> uh, free motion quilting, but um, my guess is a couple of things. First of all, it's a lot of um, tension, or it's probably a lot of tension issues because I am using different, uh, different weights of thread. So I got that, you know, I got that 12 weight, 12 weight um, on the front, which is that fatter kind, and then that 50 weight in the back. We're gonna just make little stitches as if we did this right. <laughs> it's whimsical, exactly. It's it's all over the place. But yeah, I think um, it did skip a pile of stitches there. I think I'll go back and 
maybe t try and tweak that. Maybe I can just catch it a little bit. I think, okay, I got a better, I got an idea that I think will visually make it seem like we did it okay. Let's give it a go. <laughs> just add in a little back stitch here. Like I have all those um, holes in there. Um, I didn't use a stabilizer, but it, it, there's um, th there's batting in here in this circle, Candace. There's ba there's batting, so that's why I thought it would be just like a normal, like a uh, normal quilting thing. Oh, you guys! It looks like we're trying to reconnect here again. I'm going to see if it hopefully pulls through here. Oh good, we're back. Okay guys, so it we cut out we cut out but we're back here. So I'm sure we might have lost a, a, a bunch of you, but I think I think we're back in business here. So, all right, so we we actually skipped stitches in a lot of places. So instead of doing the back stitch, I'm gonna just kind of tack, tack these down. Yeah, good, I know, that was a long, a long cutout. So see right here, I have a, I have a, a toe catcher. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go on one side and then the other and just kind of tack it down. And actually I can kind of pull it into the back as if it's like a real stitch. So I'm just gonna, those little bits, I'm gonna go around and just tack down like that. I think I think that will do the job. And I think I might have just enough thread here on this orange to finish all of these. Um, but if not, there we go. No more toe catcher there. Um, I think over here we'll get one little bit. Yeah, it cut out on my end, so I don't, you know, I don't know why that happens, and it's it's not consistent in any way, so I don't know. A needle with a bigger eye will allow a thicker thread, better movement. So this is a pretty big eye. This is a, it's a 90, a size 90, what is it, 9014? Is that, I for, I always forget the combo numbers. Um, so I could have switched to like a size 100 needle. But I thought, I thought um, 90 would be big enough, but I guess not. All right, so I'm going to get this little bit here. This is the one that looks really, um, you know, egregious, I suppose. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of still tack it down. I could I could have done the back stitch like I did here. That probably would have been the best way, but I kind of like this idea of just pulling it back and tacking it down. I'm kind of going in the back in the same hole that I'm coming out of. And we'll do one more here. I think that will give the effect that we need it to. A little far away. Man, I'm so picky today. Picky with this stuff. And we just have one extra little spot here that you kind of can't see because it went up in the direction we want it to, but I'm gonna tack it down. I think I have just enough thread to tack it down. There, looks almost like stitches now. Cool. I'm gonna tack it down just so it doesn't get caught, I think. I'm just gonna do it once. Um, just because I think that's all the thread I have left. There we go. Tack that down. All right. <laughs> I think we salvage it here. All right, so here's where I was jumping around. I'm going to just weave this in the back. Um, I can actually stab it in there because we, we have batting in there. I'm just going to kind of weave it, and I suppose I'll tie a knot too. Oh, thanks, Deborah. I, you know, it's goofy, this extra little step with the quilting, but I got so excited about there being batting in there and getting to try quilting on, on, on another project, so I'm, I'm super stoked. Just tying a couple, couple knots here. Okay, and I do one other thing. Um, uh, I forget who suggested it here, but it was a really good idea to pull 
to pull the bobbin. All I have to do, you know, I still have this bobbin thread that I was trying to pick out. All I have to do is thread it and tuck it in like a stitch. So I'm going to thread that and bring that to the back too. And we'll just, we'll just weave that into a few stitches too, just so it stays and stays in its spot. Put the needle away. A little bit of a mess. Oh, we got to still trim this guy yet too. So not quite done yet. All right. I'm going to move um, this guy out of the way. Okay, let's take a look, and I need to trim it down yet. Oh, it's cute! Okay, I freaking love it. <laughs> it's so silly. Look at it's, it's It is whimsical. It's just goofy. But look, you would never know. Like, this whole thing was hand-stitched. You know, this is where we tacked it down. We tacked it down here, too. You would never know, would you? It just looks like we quilted kind of wonky on purpose. <laughs> All right, so um, last but not least, um, I want to trim this to the six and a half inches. Uh, what size thread did you free motion with on the chevron quilt? You know, I for Mary, I think for the chevron quilt, I'm using different thread. I'm not using Aurifil. I think it's 30 weight thread. Um, so just a little heavier than, it's, it's a little heavier than this. Here, I can show you. Um, let's see. So this is, this is what I'm using for the chevron quilt. So this is 30 weight, and this is um, the 50 weight. So see, there's a little bit of a difference. This green's a little bit thicker. And then um, the, 50, the uh, 12 weight, use the 12 weight. So that's, that's thicker yet. So those are the different weights. Um, but yeah, the, the chevron quilt I'm doing with that 30 weight. Uh, just so I can see the stitches and because I just want to use up use up the thread. Okay, I don't think this really needs to be pressed. I suppose I could do a little bit press. Man, I'm I'm so finicky today. I'm I'm fussy there. We're calling it fussy. Usually I don't get this fussy, but man, I even need to I feel like I need to press this out a little bit. <laughs> oh gosh. Stop me now. Must have been a long day or something. I don't know. <laughs> Usually I'm like, meh, it's fine. And you know what? I think that is fine. Okay. Let's trim this and be done. So we made it a little bit bigger in case with all my stitching it would kind of shrink the background. We made the background a little bit bigger. So uh, you can already see we kind of drew on with water cellular marker our six and a half inches, which is the size of our block here. I'm going to just trim that. Ooh, you know what? This might be a fun opportunity to use Mr. Rotating Cutting Mat, too. I love this guy. We haven't used him yet for the Splendid Sampler. Okay, so let's try and center this guy again. I'm using my lines as a guide. But I think... I think that's where we need to be. It's a little weird to hold a ruler down because it is poofier in there. We have that um, the uh, that batting. Okay. So I'm just trying to keep holding that down, and with my rotating cutting mat, I don't have to move the ruler, although it totally just moved on its own. Yeah, that's the problem with them. Um, I'm kind of pivoting on that batting. Okay. We'll just have to realign it each time. Ah, well. You know, it's gonna all change once we sew it into the quilt anyway. But I'm picky today, I'm fussy today. Perfecty today. Perfectiony mode is on today. Yeah, the 12 weight, it, it's fun. I mean, you do have to test your tension. I've tried 12 weight in the bobbin before, and it did not make my bobbin happy. It, it was just a mess. Um, so you do kind of want to use a lighter weight thread in the bobbin, which throws your tension. So you gotta you got to play with the tension on your machine. But there we go! 
Ah, uh, another finished black. This is officially my second finished black. But look how cute. I love it so much. I think it's so sweet with that little extra bit in there. <laughs> Yay. All right, guys. That is it. We got block six done. And um, yeah, so I'm going to flip you guys around. And I want to uh, just give you a little reminder. But I'll flip you around first. Hello, hello. So oops, let's ah, get this all over. Um, there we go. So uh, here we are, first of all. I think it's adorable. I think that little, those little squiggles were just like that fun little extra touch. And I do think that orange thread, just to give it an outline, was helpful in, in my case, just because these leaves, I think, were blending too much into the background. But I freaking love it. <laughs> There's always a moment when I fall in love with the block. And I think it was definitely when we did that free motion quilting. So I'm I'm super stoked for this block. Uh, tomorrow, I just want to give you a reminder that tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. a.m., 10.30 a.m. Central Time, I'm going to do a uh, Saturday sewing session. So I did not do block five yet. That's um, the point taken block. So uh, tomorrow morning, I am going to work on this. Uh, I don't know if we'll finish it, but we'll probably work on it for probably a couple hours, probably. I think maybe two, two and a half hours is, I'm just guessing how long this is going to take. It might take a little longer than that. But uh, we're going to try and get it done or close to done tomorrow morning at 10.30 uh, a.m. Central Time. So if you haven't started it yet, if you've been waiting for me to work on it, it's going to happen tomorrow tomorrow morning. I decided to take a Saturday just because um, I'm getting further and further behind with these blocks. So uh, let's, let's get it done. Uh, so I hope to see you tomorrow morning. And I will get this one up on YouTube tonight at Penguin and Fish Movies. So thanks, guys, for joining me again. Happy, happy Friday, and have a fabulous weekend. I will see you here either tomorrow or again on Monday when we're back doing the Charming Chevrons quilting. Ooh, we're going to quilt the little label, uh, our little text. We're going to quilt some text for that. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great evening. Good night.